In this video, in a practical way, we're going to see how can we use macros to automate tasks and help us save time on a daily basis. This was the first example. The second one is a larger data set with a couple of blank rows that we need to get rid of. And I uh, also need to create some analysis, some chart to this data set right here. So let's go here to macros to access the automations that I already did. First of all, I'm going to stick with daily task and then run. Look what's going to happen here. I already get rid of the blank spaces, the blank rows. Also change the design and the width of those columns in the data set and create some analysis here using functions and formulas in Excel. Now it's time to the second portion of this test. Developer tab again, macros, and then chart. Let's click run. A new chart is already done here for me. And using two axes to separate the data that I have above. So this is how we can use macros in Excel in a practical way to save a lot of time and help us on our daily tasks routine. So step by step from scratch, we're going to learn how can we do it in Excel. So let's go. The first thing that we need to do is to enable the developer tab because here is where we have the tools that we need to use. So let's click in the home tab and in any blank space, I can right click and go to customize the ribbon. Instead of using popular commands, I want to use all tabs and choose developer, add, and then OK. Simple as that. Now we got the developer tab within our Excel, and we can use the tools that we need. However, let's first understand what we're going to need to do in this example. I have a monthly sales report by state, where I have a couple of different states and the sales for all those states. This is a task that I need to do monthly. But of course, if you have a task that you need to do every single day or weekly or monthly, like myself, of course, you can use the same principles that I'm going to show you here to help you out on your daily basis. The first thing that I need to do is improve the design and the layout of the data set. And of course, I can proceed to create some analysis to analyze the data. But let's start activating here within the developer tab the macro so i want to click record macro now i, I already got here this pop-up and i need to make some change in the options that i have let's start with the name this macro can be let's say the sales underscore report i am using a underscore to separate the words because i cannot use a space because i i can't it's going to return a red arrow if I use a space. You can also use a shortcut key uh, coupled with the control. So let's say control A or control B or control shift A and on and on. It's op optional, so I'm going to skip this. You can also use a description and I can store this macro specifically within the whole workbook, in a new workbook and on and on. But I'm also going to skip this for now and then I'm going to click OK. Everything that we do now, all the clicks, all the colors that we change, all the formats, all the maths, the formulas are going to be stored within the macro because it's recording right now. So let's be very carefully uh, with what we're going to do. Let's start with increasing the width of the column B and C. So let me click over the B and drag to the C. Within, in between the B and C, I can, I can click hold and drag to the right to make sure I can increase the width of those columns. Because everything is selected, I can go to the Home tab and align everything horizontally and vertically like this. I can also select the headers, put everything in bold, change the background color to a green one and the font color to a white one. OK, much better. Now it's time to select all the sales that I have and change the format to a dollar one or to a currency format. But uh, instead of manually using the mouse to select the range, we need to do it dynamically because let's say now I have currently 34 different rows, but maybe next month I'm going to have 40 and the next month I'm going to have 15 and on and on. So the size of the data set can change. So this is why I cannot use the mouse to select the range because I cannot set the range to go to the row 34. I need to make it dynamically until the last information that I have. And to do so, I'm going to use the keys in my keyboard. So let's click over the sales, that is the header. Now, every time I'm going to have the same position C4. 
and then I'm gonna move one cell down using the arrows, okay? And now Control Shift down to select everything and to set dynamically the range. I can go to the Home tab and change to the currency format. Okay, much better right now. Now we can start with the analysis. Let's click in the cell with the mouse E4. Okay, so we set the cell, and here I want to input minimum go and also sales go in the cell underneath let's increase the width of the column e and f as a minimum go i can have twenty thousand dollars and as the, the sales go i can have thirty five thousand dollars again and select both of those cells and change to a currency format i want to highlight the minimum go with a yellowish color and the sales go with a greenish color but i want to automatically create this highlight so I can use conditional formatting to help me. So let's again click over the sales down and then control shift down to select everything. And within the home tab, I can choose conditional formatting, highlight cells rules, and this time greater than. Now I want to highlight all those cells that are greater than the minimum goal with a yellowish fill. Okay, now I can go again to the conditional formatting and set the second criteria. Greater than. The criteria now is the sales go $35,000 and I want to highlight with a green color. Okay, we're done with the second portion of the test. The first one was the layout of the data set. The second one is the, this analysis that we are doing now. Now let's move on to the last part that is to create a couple of different analysis, such as to count the quantity of states. That we have in this list and to count the quantity of states we can use the equal sign count a function double click on two and we can count everything that we have in the column b the entire column b but here we need to be very mindful because as we select the entire column b all the cells that has something within are going to be included in this addition such as the header state but i don't want to count the header because the header is just a title, it's not a state. So I need to subtract one unit. And this is what I'm going to do here. Close parentheses minus one, and then enter. Okay, 30 is the result, because I have 30 states. And if next month I have 31, or 25, or 15, the calculation is going to be automatically updated for me whenever I run the macro. Now let's do another analysis, such as the average sale, and also the total sold, maybe the minimum sale, and also the maximum sale. As all those results are going to retrieve a currency, dollar, I can change the format to a dollar one. Okay, now let's go to the average. To do a average in Excel, we can use equal sign average. This function can help us, double click, one, two, and then select all the column C okay to include everything always enter okay so this is the average sold 29 roughly thousand dollars equal sign and now what is the total sold to make the total sold we can easily add up all the values that we have so equal sign some function double click point two and then again the entire column c need to be selected enter okay roughly nine hundred thousand dollars is the result the minimum sale is equal to mean function one two the entire column c again enter in the maximum sale equal sign max one two to select and then over the letter c is where we can click and then hit enter and we're done so those are all the analysis that we did for this report and next month or tomorrow next week i can do it all over again but this time using the macro and that way save a lot of work a lot of time do not forget to go again to the developer tab and stop recording okay that's it now every time that you need to do again the same as excel can do the job for you so let's test if it's working so let me open here a new sheet let's say i want to click in this plus sign right here new sheet and let's say now I have a new report. So I already got here the new report that I need to use in a new workbook. And I want to move all this data set to the spreadsheet that I'm currently use with the macro. So let's click over the letter A, the column A, B, and C to select everything. And then I can press Ctrl C to go. Go here over 
the current spreadsheet that I'm using, and then Control V to paste. So remember, we already did the same task here before. That is, everything is done, okay, correct, with the macro. Now I have a new sheet responding to the February. What we did was January, now we have February. So how can I automatically create the same work as before? I can go here over the developer tab, macros, and then run the sales report. Let's see if it's gonna work. So let me please click here, run, one, two, three, and yeah, that's it. So as you can see, everything is working. And as we can compare to the list before, to the, the data set before, instead of having 30 different states, now we have 40. And the total sold also changed. Now we have more than 1 million. Before we have 800,000. So as we can see, the data changed a little bit. And uh, also something that changed that we can see is the quantity of, of rows. Previews, we have 34 rows, remember? And now we have 45. So 10 more rows than before. But it doesn't matter because as we can see, all those new rows are included in the conditional formatting and also within all the calculation that we did with the formulas. Everything is working fine. So this is how we can automate tasks using the macro in Excel. Now let's move on to a second example that we can that can save us a lot of time on a daily basis. Now I have a much larger data set with some plus, let's say. Uh, a couple of blank rows, as we can see uh, here too, there is two blank rows and on and on. So I need to get rid of those blank rows and then I can proceed to make some analysis to help me because I need to do it, let's say, every day now. This task here I need to work on every single day. So it's going to save me a lot of time. Let's start first going to the developer tab and record macro. The second macro right here, maybe I can call it daily task, underscore task. Okay. Maybe I can use a shortcut key, maybe not. The description, maybe I can put something here. And, but anyway, let's click OK. Now everything that I do here is going to be saved within the macro. So let's start with data, going to data. And it's very important to select everything, all the columns that we have, A, B, C, D, E, until the last column. And then I can go to filter, okay, to enable the filters. And maybe I can go to, let's say, order ID. Click here in the filters. And instead of select everything, I just want to select the blank spaces. Okay. Now I have all the blank rows selected. And to get rid of all those blank rows, remember, we need to do it dynamically. Because maybe I, if I use the cursor, the mouse, I'm going to set a specific range. But I don't want you to do it. I want you to do it dynamically. Because currently we have, let's say, the first blank row is the row number 42. But maybe tomorrow or next week, the first blank row can be the row number 10 or the row number 20. So it can change. So that way we need to do it dynamically. That way, let's use the keys in the keyboard. Down and then shift space to select the entire row and then control shift down to select everything. Let's now use control minus to get rid of all the selected rows. And that's it. Now we can again click in the cell A1 and then clear the filter or get rid of the filter. Just click over the filter option. Yeah, that's it. Now, as we can see, we get rid of the blank spaces. No blank spaces anymore. Now, what I need to do is I need to take all the unique products that I have, or what I mean with unique is, as we can see, I have a lot of different products, omega-3, creatine, vitamin C, uh, two times. So I don't need to take vitamin C two times or for the third time and on and on. I don't want to have repetitive values. I just want to have each one of those products ohms in my list, so unique values. And to have unique values in Excel, we have a function called it unique. However, not all Excel versions, let's say the older ones, do not have this function, just the newer versions of Excel. So this is why I'm not use here the unique function. However, you can do so. But I'm going to show you another path to do the same solution. I can click over the column that I need to select the entire column and then Control-C to cope everything. Now I can go here to the right 
in any blank column, I can click, let's say, column N, and then control V to paste everything that I did copy before. Now I can go to, again, data and remove duplicates. Click here and then click OK. OK, that's it. Now I have a unique list within this data set. Now I can proceed to create some analysis, such as the total sold and also the quantity sold, let's say. Of course, I could create different analysis. I can do the same thing here. But instead of using the products as a criteria, I could use the region or maybe the months and on and on. But I'm going to keep up only with the products just to make this video shorter. So to have the total sold for all the products, I can use a sum function with a criteria that is a product equal sign sum if sum if the criteria is met. So double click one, two. Uh, the range that I want to use as the criteria is going to be the product, the entire column E. Okay, now comma. The first criteria is the product to the left, comma. And the sum range is going to be the total price, like this. And then enter. Now let's move on to the quantity sold because we can use the same function. Equals time sum if. Double click one, two. The range again is going to be the column E, where I have the criteria. Comma, my criteria is the product, comma, and the sum range is going to be the quantity, column F. OK, enter. I can select both of those values and at the bottom right corner of the cell, click hold and drag down. I can also select all the columns and increase the width of those columns and select the entire column O and then click here uh, to transform everything into a currency format like this. I can also select the headers and go to the home tab put everything in bold change the background color maybe to a green one and put the font with a white color like this i can also do something similar to the data set select the entire header change the, the background to a green one put the font in white and change to bold and also i can select all the columns and double click in between one column to another one two to auto adjust the width of those columns to contain all the texts and informations that we have within the columns. And that's it, I'm done. So let's click maybe right here in this cell R3 and then developer stop recording. That's it, simple as that. Now we have another automation using Excel. And maybe a third automation that we could create here is using this analysis that we did to create a chart in Excel. So simply we can go again to the developer we could also do it within the same macro as we are using before. However, uh, let's just split them apart. And just because I forgot to do it. So let's click here, record, and then uh, chart. OK, let's click over the header right here. And then I can go to insert and then choose a chart. Maybe this one right here, the first one, clustered column. Well, let's say we have two different columns, a blue one and an orange one. The blue one means the total sold, and the orange one, the quantity sold. I don't want to have the quantity sold using the same values proportion than the total sold. Because if so, it's going to be very difficult to see, because it's so small. I can even see the height of the, this orange column. So that way, I can right-click in the chart, and then go to Change, Chart Type, and Trombo, Quantity Sold. I can use a line, however with a secondary axis to see one value corresponding to the blue column and another set of values corresponding to the orange line. And then I can click OK. That's it. Now I can click here again over the header, developer, stop recording. So this is what we did. Some change to the design of the data set and also the analysis. And then we create another macro to help us with the chart that I need to do daily. So let's see if it's working with a new sheet. So let's click here, add new sheet to have a blank workbook. And then I can take the new report that I'm gonna use, that is this one right here. I can select everything, all the columns, Control C to cope. And then I can go to the current sheet that I'm using and then Control V to paste everything. However, as we can see, there's a lot of things that it needs to change here, such as the design, the size of the columns, also, we need to create the analysis and the chart for the data set that we have. So let's make it faster. Macros, 
And then, first of all, let's start with the daily task. Okay, this was the first macro that we did for this data set, and then run. Okay, everything is done as we can see perfectly with all the functions here working fine. And then again, macros, and then chart and run. Let's see if this one works. Okay, now we have a new chart showing us the data that we have before, and also the chart has two axes one for the blue column and another one for the orange line. So this is how we can use macros in Excel to help us on a daily basis to save time and automate tasks. And something that is very important is to know how to save this workbook in Excel to make sure we save properly the macros. Because if you just save normally, you're going to lose everything that you did. So it's very important to know how to save properly this Excel file. And I'm going to show you here now how can you properly save this workbook. So first of all, go to File and then Save As. And here you can click on Browse. And something that is very important is here, Save As Type Excel Macro Enabled Workbook. This is what is the most important thing to make sure you can save properly all the automations that we did with the macros. So click here, XLSM. Now you can click here, Save. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions or any suggestions, to the next videos let me know comment down below and i see you tomorrow as every day has a new video i see you there